Young Blood Strike File. Hell yeah. Who's excited for this? Um, we're not doing Young Blood Strike File, the Rob Liefeld version. Although I have to say, when I get to this eventually, honestly, some of his better work is in this, even though it's still terrible. We are here for Young Blood Strike File, J. Lee edition. Um, hell yeah. J. Lee has gone through several different. Uh, well, not several, I guess, but, you know, a couple different art styles. Um, I like what he does these days. It's very good. It's very, um, a lot of thought given to composition and shadow and style. And But for whatever reason, he left behind this insane, over-the-top, like, demonic monster, satanic, crazy shit that he used to do. I can't say that... I blame him or hold it against him or that he's certainly not gotten worse. That's not the case at all. But it's just a shame that he's still out there drawing comics and he doesn't do anything that looks even remotely close to this. This art style just doesn't exist anymore for him. And it's kind of a shame because I'm sure there's, you know, there's other artists who would try to emulate it and try as they might, no one quite gets the same look. Um... And there's a lot of things about this stuff that when we go through it, there are things that would make you, like, you would use this, you'd say the uh, critique about any other artist that would try to do some of the crap that Jay Lee pulls, and you'd be like, that's bullshit, you can't do that, that's stupid, it's lazy, but somehow Jay Lee makes it work, mainly because I think the insane visuals just work so well it just distracts you from the fact that one the most important thing especially in issue one backgrounds are almost 100 percent not there um so i say almost meaning there's a little teeny tiny bit so how can you get away with that can you i don't know pretty eye-catching cover Focusing on stupid chapel, like not an interesting character. But when I think of all the characters in Youngblood, pretty much it's the same thing. They're all not interesting. And I guess chapel maybe is the most interesting in a way. I don't know. So creator and plot, uh, Rob Liefeld. Oh, thank you. Thank God. Pencils and inks, Jay Lee. And then you got some pretty cool color by Steve Olaf and Ollie Optics. So basically, we jump back and forth between a time in the past and then a time in the present. And we have Chapel. And this is Al Simmons pre-getting murdered by Chapel and becoming Spawn. And then some dork nobody who we don't know. And I went through and I actually read this. And it's just such cliche, you know, we're here on a team, uh, on a mission. We're a team. We're awesome. We have to infiltrate this place. We're paid to act. That's what we do. So, okay. Now, one of the biggest things about comic storytelling is like establishing shot, giving you a sense of where are they? Even if it's just one panel, where are these characters? Now, if you look at this, there is absolutely nothing to tell you anything about where they're at blank background there and then they take off charging and shooting and then there's just a sea of ink splatter i don't know what it's supposed to be representative of as they kill some of these guys in the background these muzzle flash things are wildly insane so any other artist that tries this it'd be like fail you failed how are you getting paid for this shit but i'm looking at it i'm like I'm just enamored by how the heavy inks, the scratchy lines, the shadows, it, it somehow it just works. It's a totally hypocritical kind of thing. And then we just continue on. There's just random robotic something or others getting shot to hell. They're stomping along here through the flames and the wreckage and the destruction. There's a little teeny tiny background back here. Some like factory kind of something kind of a security door panel right here. Chapel kicks open a door, I guess. 
And then there's a bunch of guns pointing at him. So again, backgrounds, almost nothing. Lots of ink splatter, lots of profoundly visually exciting art. Like the image guys were smart. There were certain other artists out there besides the original founding fathers. Like you have to get Dale Keown. You have to get Sam Keith. You have to get Jay Lee. These guys were all like at the top of their game as opposed to, you know, the studios that hired on new guys who weren't very good to start, but then were given the opportunity to become really good. There were several, several artists out there that were just totally being eaten up by the fans, and Jay Lee's absolutely one of them. So they're smart to get him. And his visual style, even though there's no backgrounds, like, as a kid, you're like, fuck yeah, look at that, hell yeah. I mean, they're shooting at what? Why are they like no shirts, no gear? They're just like in tank tops or nothing. Their nipples are rock hard. They're shooting their guns at something. And we're just like, hell yeah. Fuck your backgrounds. This is awesome. So I'm on board. I'm kind of digging it. Chapel's doing some kind of super kick at something. Muzzle flash again pointy bits from robotic whatever things chapel looking less like a, a demon from hell this ridiculous jagged ass blade dagger that he's got the belts of bullets just hanging off him i mean does he have this shit on him here that's interesting he's pulling a life belt there's like he changes the kind of gear he has on him depending on the panel that he's in then he's standing there victorious over these dead robotic things. And they run into this villain, Geiger, Geiger, whichever way it's said. Um, we're here to kill you. And like, oh, whatever. You're not, you like, you must die. No, you must die. That's basically what the dialogue is. Um, nothing interesting going on. We're just here to look at these crazy visuals. And Geiger's like, Hey, blah, 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 um, Sectra, et cetera, I'll, I'll get you eventually. That's a crazy, creepy face right there. And then for some reason, they decided, like, the third team, not Chapel and not Al Simmons Spawn, this other guy betrayed them, I guess. And so Al Simmons puts the gun right to his face and blows his brains out. Like, it's pretty obvious right here. His glasses are flying off, multiple rounds being shot, but then we have to, like, then take a whole nother panel to show the bullet going in his mouth, blowing his brains out, goo coming out of his eyes. And then Al Simmons is like, the agency doesn't look too fondly on traitors, Duke old boy. Maybe you'll think, maybe next time you'll think twice before selling out your CIA brothers, or selling your CIA brothers down the river. Damn, I almost forgot. There won't be a next time. Pretty epic explosion. Loving the colors on that. Works really well. The amount of ink on these pages is just astounding. And then three days later, they're back in Washington. They're talking with Jason Wynn, the uh, one of the the main bad guy, or one of the main bad guys. There's like the Tony Twistelli, and then there's Satan, and there's Jason Wynn. It's all boring shit, but that's you know what the bad guy from Spawn that Chapel's kind of wrapped up with, as well as Al Simmons, of course. Um. Chit chatting back and forth. Fast forward five years, and I'm am in Wynn's office again. He's just gotten more powerful. He's like, "I'm here. You wanted to see me. The past is the past. I don't, I don't want to work with you. I got a skull face, so I'm awesome." And um, so Jason Wynn's like, "Hey, you could go kill um, Geiger, the guy that threatened to kill you before." And Chapel's like, "Fuck your mama. I ain't doing that." go to hell again background so some lines i guess it's supposed to be a window and then some drapery and then kind of a door and then kind of a door and kind of a phone and then jason wins like i need you to pull up my number from a rolodex for me i believe you'll find it under g the name is geiger and then you got this shattered image of Chapel himself. Dun, dun, dun. Very scary. So, again, these um, Youngblood Strike Files are short stories. And then it's a flip book like we saw with Rob Liefeld stuff going on. We'll get into those later. So, issue one. 
Um, very deep, intricate story that we're all very excited to see where it goes, right? It's, for me, artistically, got a little bit more interesting. Um, Jay Lee's a little bit more of his designy sense. He, he de starts doing a little bit more background as the issues go on, which is really weird. A lot of artists who... A lot of times the artists will throw everything that they have in like the first issue, but then they put so much time and effort into it and it burned up so much time. They don't have the, the time left over or the interest to put in the same level of detail in subsequent issues as they did in issue one. Um, in this, Jay Lee, he maintains peak form all the way throughout, but as it goes on, he starts adding a little bit more backgrounds. Like I said, there was absolutely almost zero in issue one, but they get a little bit more. Um, this, it's almost a soft, like it's an attractive woman, obviously, but done in this angular, very harsh style that Jay Lee does. I really like the ink lines on the hair. Very interesting. I always absolutely love this middle panel. Um, the kind of simple line drawing of like the silhouette of Chapel Lion here as he's pounding ass on Hot Girl. Um, I think this figure of her, I'm going to bring it up closer. The simple line work works really well. I'd love to see this in black and white. And these designy kind of abstracty candles, like they look flat. They don't have any three-dimensional kind of look to them at all, but I like it. They just look like flat little shapes. And then the edges of the blankets, I guess, coming up like little claw spider hands on this bed. It makes no sense at all, and I love everything about it. It just looks amazing. So, but then you see the uh, upper skylight, this angled skylight, and there's some shadowy figures, and this bolt of lightning, the coloring's really working. So, bad guys. And they say, um, takes me about... A second to figure out that you suckers are state-of-the-art cybernetic war dogs. Cybernet war dogs. So cybernetic assassins. Pretty awesome shit. Looks like the kind of thing Jay Lee would just absolutely love to draw. Of course, the girl's going to get shot to death because that's how it goes. Um, and of course, we're going to make her look sexy as she gets riddled with bullets. And somehow all these bullets miss Chapel. I guess the implication is that her body was like a human shield, but the bullets are going right through her. Anyway, he's the hero, so he has to survive. Um, so he's cradling her dead body. He's like, it says here, I might as well be moving in slow motion as I watch the girl get hard three times. Um, fortunately, I hit her hard just a few minutes ago and she was into it. Anyway, she's dead. Any questions either one of us might have had about this being more than a one night stand or rendered moot as she collapses in my arms. Needless to say, what happens next isn't pretty. So I'm digging all this artwork. Jay Lee makes a visually interesting page no matter what's going on. Even if it doesn't, it, like this is almost like a nightmarish kind of scenario. Like, this doesn't happen in the real world. But this is the real world for Jay Lee. Anyway, out of the window, sh the window shatters, and the cybernetic war dogs, it looks like there's one, two, three, four of them. Although, you only really kind of see two here, but I guess there were four up on the roof. So I guess it makes sense. This extreme perspective on these buildings. It looks like, I've seen McFarlane do things like that. You know what? It works. It, it conveys a sense of extreme height and disorientation and the energy crackling as they get launched out the window and so chapel standing there with one of these creatures still left over his face like put through the concrete wall and his arm just kind of hanging out pretty violent messed up stuff i'm digging it he's like after all these years why would geiger sick his dogs on me now so we got to get back to a big giant double page spread so Chapel picks up one of the robotic heads and it's like, oh, greetings, old friend. As you may have guessed, uh, the motivation behind my attack was to get your attention. Um, assuming I've done that, I'll be brief. Meet me down by the docks tomorrow night. Oh, and in case it hasn't occurred to you yet, this unit will self-destruct in 10 seconds. So he chucks it out the window. It explodes. So Chapel gears up and Jay Lee inks up. I mean, I guess he, this is the Washington Monument. They said we're going to be down by the docks, but right 
That's the Washington Monument, correct? Is there a dock near the Washington Monument? What the fuck? Who cares, right? There's a lot of ink splatter everywhere. I bet Jay Lee got ink all over his damn hands. Like, what a mess. But how fun. But Chapel's here. He's got his chains on, including a little chain with a little skull hanging around his neck. And the bad guy, I guess they're on a dock. That's what that is supposed to be, I guess. And in, port, in teleports Geiger, wherever the hell he's from. I don't remember where he, we've ever seen him before. And he's like, hey, you know, Jason Wynn told you to come kill me. But here's the deal. You go kill him and then I won't kill you. I mean, okay. Again, this great. These drawings are just so fantastic. I, I just, I want to see this stuff in black and white. It, I'm not saying that to be disparaging to the color. I think the color is actually working perfectly. But to see this type of stuff in black and white would just be amazing. Chapel doesn't like the idea of being manipulated. So he murders some of the Geiger's little minions here. Puts the gun to Geiger's face. And um, I, I like that shot. The uplighting on that looks fantastic. Chapel just looking like fucking Satan here. And um, so Chapel blows his head off, of course, looking just like an absolute monster, screaming, I'll see you in hell. And Geiger's like, did you really think I'd be foolish enough to come to you in person? I'd watch my back if I were you, Chapel. This isn't over yet. I mean, it never is. So, again, no backgrounds, but I. It, why does it work? It, it just does. It does for me. I mean, I think you have to have a certain amount of, like, a certain kind of taste to enjoy this kind of stuff. And I get it if you don't. But um, if any other artist were trying to do this, I'd be like, hey, come on. you got to throw something in here sometimes. If it's not on every page, that's fine. But on occasion, you got to have some kind of background. But this is Jay Lee, and it's just totally eye-catching and distracts you from the fact that the rest of there's no backgrounds or anything like that um hell of a cover coloring's kind of crazy hunched over like that that crazy anatomy so cool we're back in the past chapel's getting some technological medical enhancements that make him feel better than ever so Jay Lee's doing some backgrounds. Even if it's mostly silhouette and just kind of abstracty shapes and technological gear, it's something. So it kind of works. I dig it. Story continues to be by Rob Liefeld and script by Eric Stevenson. So it's genius, I'm sure. But they're injecting Chapel with all kinds of shit. Look at that shot. Even when Jay Lee tries to draw the regular human faces, they look kind of demonic. Um, that's pretty badass. But it's like, is this face paint or does he got like a real skull for a, like, it looks like his, like, monster fangs. But it's just supposed to be war paint at this point. Anyway, continues talking with the scientists. Weird, designy background stuff. Weird, but it works. And the coloring, leaving the white void kind of around it. I wonder how he kind of came to that conclusion. I bet they were really challenged with, like, God, this guy's not giving us anything to work with. So Chapel comes out and tells Al Simmons, like, hey, man, you should go get some of this shit. Like, uh, it, it's making me awesome. It'll make you awesome, too. And Al Simmons is like, buddy, I ain't putting that shit in my body. He says, Wanda and I are still trying to have a baby. The last thing I need is for Wynn's techno geeks to fill me up with God knows what kind of chemicals. So this is, again, obviously before... Al Simmons gets killed by Chapel and becomes Spawn and blah blah blah. And so Chapel's like, yeah, whatever. Um, I'm not what I'm not too sure what this stuff is they're giving me, but as long as it keeps producing the same results, I don't care. I mean, look at me, Al. Have you ever seen a more perfect specimen? Crazy anatomy. It works, but it's so wild. Anyway, this is the past. We're back to the present. Chapel's throwing on his gears. I like this shot of him kind of bent over, hands on this kind of like glass table and his guns in silhouette. Looks great. Chapel's got some, he got some people need killing and that's what we're here for. So look, kind of some backgrounds. Tilting on the angle, like very severe angle, but it works, some kind of house, chain link fence. He snu uh, cuts the power for, I guess, an alarm, jumps over the fence, some dogs show up. So he 
cuts them down, busts through the door, goes tracking through here and runs into Wynn. Points his gun, points his knife, threatens him. Like, I'm going to kill you. No, you're not. Who cares about the story? Wynn basically threatens him and says, all that crap we dumped into you years ago, by the way, um, we basically infected you with the HIV virus, I believe they say. Yeah. Um, Jason Wynn's like saying, you should know that I've also disclosed your illness to the heads of the Youngblood organization this morning. If and when you return to Youngblood headquarters, you will be discharged on the basis of having the HIV virus. So, you know, he's threatening his life, his job. You know, of course, Jason Wynn's always got plans within plans. And he's got he's got the edge on Chapel. So Chapel's like, well, I, I ain't going down alone. I can kill you. Of course, he's got to scream no and point his guns. Pretty awesome shot. But, of course, Jason Wynn, he says, well, you're more than welcome to. But before you do, you should know I have the cure. And Chapel's like, well, what do you want? Ah, I thought that would get your attention. So we're just going to have a wonderful partnership together, Chapel. And if you want to live, we're going to maintain our partnership. And uh, if you want to keep going and living, you know where to reach me. The end? Question mark? So, I mean, did anything of any substantial kind of significance happen? No. Except that we got to see Jay Lee do what he does best, which is draw big, violent, crazy scenes with ink all over the page and monstrous figures and guns and bullets and knives and murder and death and blood. It's what Jay Lee used to do perfectly. And again, it's a shame that he doesn't draw this way anymore. Again, he's really good. I, I like everything that he does, but... It's not the same. It's still dark and gothic and creepy. It's just like a more tamed version that Marvel Comics is more interested in having him do for them, which is, I don't know. Is that what he's drawing these days? Is something from Marvel? I don't know. Seems like a really nice guy. I've never heard anything bad about Jay Lee. He uh, works consistently and he's done nothing but good work i just i just wish that he did this more but that's it that's all i've got for now so thank you for joining me and i'll see you on the next one